All right, so you've bought a star diagnostic machine, you get it home, you plug it in, and you're not sure what to do with it. So I'm gonna walk you through some basic functions on how to use it. I'll try to keep the video short, and I'll try to add more as time goes on for different functions. I have one here, but it's just, I just use it for the simulator. There's actually a simulator mode Got to be careful you don't use a simulator mode because you're not reading anything, but the computer makes up stuff. So from here, pick the make. Once you get to the model, we'll do something easy like a 220 because everyone seems to own a 220 nowadays. You don't have to pick none of this stuff. Okay. Once you get in here, don't worry about the car. Straight to the stethoscope. It'll figure it out on its own. Okay, tell you some warnings, yada yada, F2. More warnings. Okay, uh, if you read the car, it would probably pick this already. Since I'm in simulator, I gotta make up some of my own stuff. So you may or, you may, or may not see that screen. Same thing here. You may not have to worry about this, okay? But you can play with these options if you use simulator or if you went into manual mode. All right, again, I'm gonna pick the car. Nothing in USA is the zero. We are the long body chassis for 220, so I'm going to pick a 1. Uh, if you notice the 1, 220.1, 220.0 means small, 220.1 means bigger, 220.2 would be a station wagon, 3 is a coupe, 4 is a convertible, 8 is a GLK, uh, or 9 is a GLK, 8 is a, uh, a GL. <clears throat> can learn those as time goes on, so I'll pick a common S500. This process is the same for any car. Again, you won't see these because I'm in simulator, but since I'm gonna do an early 220, it'll be the D2B. So for most of you, once you pick the car, it'll go right to this screen here. So a couple of options we have. <clears throat> Dealers use this because we can add and take away certain codes to stuff. Uh, same thing here, we can add information for the repair that we're doing, you know, submit it to, to Benz or whatnot. You guys won't be concerned with that. Uh, what you want is quick test, and we'll, we'll do that last. I'm gonna go backwards because that one takes the longest. Um, say you just wanna read the check engine light or the trans, or a specific module. You, you know what you need to go after. We're gonna go straight to control units. It breaks it down to the groups. Uh, let's go for a SAM or a cluster. We'll go for the cluster. F3 okay, or you can double tap, whatever. Uh, again, this is simulator, so you won't get some of this stuff. We'll try that one. Ain't worried about that. This is what you see once you get into the module. The version tells you about the module. You can get part numbers from it, uh, software, hardware status. That comes in handy if you, need, if you have bulletins you're looking for. Fault codes, that's the money shot. You're gonna go in there and that's gonna be the codes that, that are thrown. This of course is a simulator, so every code is thrown, all right? We're gonna come back to the screen because this is where you want most of your information from. Uh, actual values is where you read what everything is doing. You can see there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so we'll go with engine just because it tells us some information there. This is where you just see what's happening. All right, um, some of the settings you have in the cluster. Every module is different, but this is pretty much actual values is where you're gonna see what everything that connects to that module is doing. 
actuations, that's when you can activate something. For the cluster, we can make certain things happen, okay? Uh, maybe I shouldn't have picked cluster, but, uh, uh, you know, if we're going to activate something, it'll give us the option to turn it on or off. You can see by these buttons here, that'll be light on, this will be exit, and then F2 is to advance, F1 is always to back up, F3 is either to actuate or enter something, and you'll see what I mean by that. So initial startup, that's what happens when you change a module. If you have one that's dead, you can code it manually. If you have one that's still working, even if it's got problems, you still want to take from that module and transfer to a new one. All you're doing is transferring settings so you can save yourself a headache because some modules can fit. You've seen all the different versions of 220. Some modules will fit 30 different models, so they all can be option different. That's where it's important. If you don't know what it's supposed to have, let the module do its own thing. Adaptations is pretty much what that one just did. Um, we can see coding, you can change coding, you can turn on or off tire pressure monitor, uh, and you know, change the engine version. You know, there's a lot of codings you can change in there. Settings, that's the customer settings, things that you can change from the seat from sitting in front of the cluster. Alright, so if you know what you're going after, you can go to complete list of guided tests. This gives you tests you can perform. Let's say if we're going to check the alternator, just double tap, or you can press F3. Uh, it'll uh, most time when you go to a test, it'll give you what needs to be fulfilled before you can do that test. Uh, so let's just go right to check charging current. Here it tells you what to do. Okay, once you get in here, yes or no, and it'll just keep giving you different options based on on what you pick. So if you pick yes or no, let's go back and see what it says. But no gives us more options as to what can be bad. So this is not only shows you fault codes, but it can tell you how to diagnose it. And we're gonna go into that because that's the most important part. Um, other, What I use my simulator for is when I help people online, they give me a fault code, I go into a complete list of fault codes. This shows me all the fault codes that can be thrown in the cluster. I pick one and then I see the test step from there and I can tell you how to diagnose something, all right? Uh, troubleshooting by means of complaints or systems. That's if you have something that's going on, but you don't have a fault code. Uh, you know, these are some, some good information in here. All the modules have the same options. Uh, some of them may have one or two. You may not see this one uh, or even that one on yours because I'm in this, um, I got some Chinese bootleg one with my simulator going. It's got some stuff that I never even seen as a tech, which I don't even care about. Uh, a log is it just prints out every value the computer sees every fault code software hardware it's it must be like a 40 page printout that's what the engineers use when we would submit problems to mercedes all right service information usually kicks you over to wis and it'll pull up some information based on the model all right so let's pick a better uh before we go to fault codes let's pick something else so let me go right back to control units Okay, let's go to drive, so you can pick F3 or double click it. Let's go right to the engine module. Uh, don't worry about that, because that's just for the simulator. Again, warnings, F3 to advance. Okay, notice, same thing, version, fault codes, memory. Uh, there's some tests here, because the engine module is different from the cluster, but same thing, actual values, actuation, startup, adaptions complete list of stuff. All these are almost cookie cutter. A lot, lot of the same options in there. So let's go to fault codes because that's what we're mainly concerned with every time. Okay, so let's pick cool and temp sensor. You only got one fault code, cool and temp sensor. What do you do? Yeah, I got the code, now what do I do? Well, a lot of people have these scanners, they don't know. Right here's the magic key. Hit enter it's gonna do what we call process the fault code whenever I say process a fault code I mean that we're going to enter the fault code and do what the computer tells us to do so here uh, it's gonna tell you you know options that you can do do we want to check it yes we want to check the cool attempt sensor so then we hit enter then it brings us to the next screen where we usually do these in order okay start at the top work our way down so we want to check the cool attempt sensor using the actual value once we get in there, it tells us with the key on and the temperature actually between 80 and 105 
the temperature sensor should show that. Well, it's not. So then it tells you the connection, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so it just gives you more information. It tells you what you're looking for uh, or what you need to do. Then yes or no. Well, if you pick yes, it'll say it's okay. Um, tells you what else to check. Now we're gonna go back. So let's just go back to that code and see what happens if we put no. If we put no, then it's gonna give us a different excuse. Okay, so as a tech, we can play with those just to see what it could be if it's gonna pass and if it's not. Uh, but having the test step definitely helps you because you don't wanna just read the fault code and be at a dead end. All right, then depending on your system, if you have WIS hooked up, let's see if this one will jump me over the WIS. If you do the description, yes. Okay, so this one actually tells you what sets the fault code. If you don't know what sets the fault code, how are you supposed to know how to fix it? So this tells you all the parameters that the engine module is looking for in order to set the fault code. That's very important. All right, so let's go back to star diagnostic, which we call SDS. Okay, when you're in here, I'll show you some of these other quick keys. F1, again, is always to back up. F3 is to enter. This one will actually keep checking fault codes. So let's say you fix something while you're in here. You just refresh it and it's gonna rerun all the codes and see what pops up, all right? This gives you information. I can't tell you I've ever really used that in my experience. Uh, F8 gives you freeze frame data. When the fault code occurred, what miles, yada yada. This is really helpful when it comes to fuel trims because you wanna know if it's idle or off idle when there's a problem, all right? Okay, so F9 is to erase. Okay, then it says, do you want to erase it? Yes. It'll tell you to shut off the key. 10 seconds, key on. All right, never mind mine. And then F11, we can print. You can either print to your printer or you can actually print to an internal storage area on, on the scanner. So let's get out of here. Let's show you the quick test mode. And, oh, okay, so let's say you got a problem with ABS, but you're not sure how ABS works or how many modules are affected. You're gonna to go to here and we're gonna to go to chassis and we're gonna go to brake system. This tells you every module that's intertwined with the brakes or the traction or the aromatic. Um, same thing if we wanted to go into, let's see, interior equipment. The rear screen, we want to know how the rear screen the rear screen works. It tells you these are three modules involved. So just to make that rear screen work, the central gateway is involved, the upper control panel, and the rear SAM. Those three things have to work together in order for the rear screen to come up, the rear sunshade. So this is kind of neat if you didn't know how the system actually worked. Uh, me be doing Ben's almost 15, 16 years, you know, that stuff just you just learn over time. But if you've never worked on a car before and you finally get a scanner, you hook it up and you're not sure how it works that's where you want to go the functions all right so let's say you just hook up to your car and you want to read codes that's where we're going to go to the infamous quick test or short test is what we used to call it so you're going to hit that my scanner should go fast since it's a simulator mode this is going to run through every single control module you have a big f is a current fault a small f is a stored fault and I is an event. An event is not really a fault, it's more like the, the, the scanner noticed something that happened, or the car noticed there was a problem, but then it went away and it didn't really affect much of anything. So it's just more of an information. Um, I can't say I've ever had an event that really, really caused concern to a customer. Uh, more of something that just kind of happened. Um, so now we did the short test, and now you know all these modules have faults. Well, good, what do you do now? Do you go into an individual into each one to see what the faults are? No, you don't. You hit F8. And what that does is it expands them all eventually. So now you can see the trans module. It shows you the, ver the version stuff that we would have had to go into the module to see. The, tra the part number, hardware, software, uh, the version of it. Uh, and I'm not really sure what that is. That's too smart for my blood. Then it gives you all the fault codes, okay? So it shows you all the fault codes for that module while it's open, and then the events, all right? And all I'm doing is hitting the down arrow to go down. And then it'll bring me to the next module, eventually. So now next one is selector lever, selector lever module. Same thing, all the codes that are there. So this is the fastest way 
to see every code and every module instead of going into each individual one. So the first thing we do as a tech, we hook this up to the car, put it in the car, hit the stethoscope, go to quick test, hit expand, and then we press print, and then we actually print initial quick test log, and it prints out everything before we even touch the car. That way we know where it started. And then when we're done, and you erase the codes, in fact, let me show you what happens. We're gonna abort, fate, Erase, yes. Now watch down here, we got F1, three, four, uh, start, which is gonna start the quick test information, the one that expands it, and the erase. All right, okay, so if I do another quick test, this is gonna count it as my final quick test because I did one after the first one. It don't matter if you do one or 40 of them, it's only gonna count the first one and the last one. Oh, and exclamation means that the control module can't talk. Those are very important if you, had, if you have can faults. All right, now when F7 showed up, what that does is that actually cycles between the first set of fault code readouts and the second. So you can compare to see what happened. That is excellent. In case you don't know, oh crap, I didn't print it out. I'm not sure what I had before. F7 goes back and shows you what you had. Here's one I didn't touch on, but I'm gonna right now. No pun intended. F4 cycles between all of these. So if we only had a couple modules that had an F or an I or an exclamation, you hit that and it filters them. Only control units with fault codes and events. And it does it again. Only control units with faults. And do it again. Only control units with events. And do it again. All control units. See how that's changing up there? I'll cycle through it, okay? And then if you look on the side, granted, my simulator threw every one of fault code and event and, and everything known to man, so it's kind of not a great example, but you can at least see what that button does. You know that you're not hurting anything, what it's changing, okay? All right, so that's pretty much how to use a star, di star diagnostic. And once you're done, you want to back out, okay, and just hit exit, uh, F8, return to initial mask. And, us. and then we'll get back to the home screen. And that's a quick 20 minute tutorial on how to use star diagnosis. Uh, so the only other thing that might be beneficial is in your settings, you can actually pick, let me get it here, this one's hard to touch. Um, oh, the vehicle. You can pick it to already pick Mercedes. If you're only gonna touch a Mercedes, always pick Mercedes and click accept. And what that's gonna do is, Once we, once we get out, uh, well, when I first started up, it's always gonna go right to the screen, every time. I would have to pick something else to pick another unit, a car, uh, or just click brand to go back. So I can set any one of these up as the home screen. So far I have been set up. So next time I start it, it's gonna start at this screen here. So again, real quick, before going through the quick test and everything, you want to read codes on your 163? Well, you know what? I don't even like that one. Let's not pick that one. Let's pick uh, 203. That's a good one. Uh, C-Class, where are you at? 203. All right. Instead of trying to filter through here and see which one you have, just hit the stethoscope. It'll automatically pick the car for you. It'll read it by VIN, and then it'll save you all kinds of time. So um, I can teach you what those numbers mean in a different video. I will try to keep my videos short. I think 20 minutes is kind of long as it is, but this is the first one doing this because I notice a lot of people have these and don't know how to use them. So if you have questions on stuff and you need help, uh, look me up. Send me a send me a question. Um, not sure why anyone would dislike this video, but some people just are haters, so they want to dislike. So have at it. You guys have a good night.